Hello, welcome back. I didn't expect to see you back so soon. If you're new here, then welcome back to the Media 13 Book Club. And if you were someone that was here last week, I hope you spent the check on something now. I had a few of you asking how frequently these episodes were going to be uploaded, and I can confirm they are going to be weekly. A lot of people are quite curious as to what I think of the second book, and all I'm going to say is you've asked, then I've answered. No, please come back, I promise I'll stop. I'm going to start off by saying that the Ask and the Answer is my favourite of the Chaos Walking books. It introduces a lot of new storytelling aspects, and it takes the characters in very interesting directions that the Knife of Never Letting Go touched upon, but never really got into all that deeply. So the first thing that I noticed is that this book decides to split off the narrative point of view and half of the book is told from Todd's perspective, which we're used to from the first book. The other half of the book goes to Viola's perspective, which is one thing I wanted to know more about uh, in the first book. You know, I wanted to see how her train of thought was approaching these situations um, compared to Todd. And in this book, we get that. Now what we also get in this book is a redemption arc for a character that I did not think could be redeemed. At the end of Knife and Never Letting Go, um, Davy Prentice, son of Mayor Prentice, shoots Viola. And in my opinion, you shoot a character that's being played by Daisy Ridley, you're never getting redeemed in my eyes. Seeing that, it's very surprising that by the end of this book, um, I've never felt more for a character. The story that Davy has in this book is an interesting one because for the most part you can't tell where it's going but then in the final act it becomes very certain that he is on a redemption arc um, and it then becomes a case of is he going to live up to that or is it going to fall short. And in my honest opinion it is 100% justified. I think his redemption arc is amazing. Uh, his scene, the ending scene is so emotional. It's the best written moment in these books in my opinion. And it just makes you feel so much more for Davy when you learn the truth that he's been hiding from Todd. But Davy, at the end of this book, is killed by his dad, um, basically showing that one Prentice could have been redeemed, and in a way, in my opinion, was, um, but the other is irredeemable, no matter what anything in the future shows us. Because trust me, they're going to try and show us. This book has the inner workings of sort of sparks of a war beginning to brew. You know, Todd is forced to spend the majority of this book's length uh, by the mayor's side. Uh, Viola isn't. But at the same time, Viola is part of a side that is attacking New Prentice Town, setting off bombs, and innocent people are dying. So it becomes a moral conflict where Todd is our protagonist and he is on the side of someone we should not be siding with. And Viola is on, also our protagonist on the side of someone that, while is against our main antagonist, also has very grey morals. So that dynamic in trying to find a balance between the two is interesting for me. I think Patrick Ness does a really good job of orchestrating that, uh, playing out the stakes, uh, which are very, very high in this book. Every moment where it feels like there is a threat, it genuinely feels like there is. There's no moment where the tension slips up. Um, when it comes, it's there to stay. We also get more uh, progression of their relationship romantically uh, with Viola and Todd. And we also get this concept of, I am the circle and the circle is me. This is a saying that Todd keeps on uttering throughout this book. We're not quite sure what it means or what the mayor has taught him this for, but we are aware it's coming from the mayor, so it's probably pretty suspect. But Todd and Davy spend a lot of time in this book together. Um, and from the last book where they were straight up rivals, it's very interesting seeing this new dynamic where they have to work together, because to begin with, they're still at a knife's edge. Uh, they don't like each other at all. But as they grow closer, um, it's weird because we realise that Davy appeared to be someone who was just by his father's side blindly in the first book. Uh, but in retrospect, after what we learn in the Ask and the Answer, he was someone dying for his father's approval because his father never really took him in, if that makes sense. And with Todd, uh, we see him, I, I believe we see him say at one point, that all he wanted was a friend. Uh, and... That was one thing that everything building together just made the climax seem that much harder to take in. It might be one of my favourite written deaths in a book that I've read. Uh, it's without it, the saddest moment in a book I've ever came across. It is phenomenal. Uh, it's The Ask and the Answer, while being my favourite Chaos Walking book, is also probably one of my favourite books in general. I just think everything that Patrick does with the story, uh, the characters, the narrative, it's it all blends together so well. It builds off in service of the knife of never letting go as well as setting up something huge for monsters of men. I mean, Todd and Viola never really spend any time together whatsoever. There's rarely 
I think they spend a total of 15% of this book together, maybe, if that. Unless I need to reread it. At the same time, they grow so much as characters. Um, and they're both forced to sort of judge the side that they're a part of. And I know it's been done a lot of times in media before, but to this extent where I was so invested in the characters where every single twist and turn had me shaking uh, and just not wanting to stop reading, I can't quite put into words how much this book genuinely means to me. I don't know why I'm tapping it like this. But overall, asking the answer, um, what did I think? Well, I've just answered it. The asking the answer is phenomenal. If you decided to read uh, The Knife I Never Letting Go after I recommended it last week, trust me when I say that if you have continued on and decided to read um, The Ask and the Answer, 100% you're not going to regret it. If I could, I would give this book a six star, but that's sort of me breaking my own rules two episodes in that we are doing a maximum of five because films are going to be out of ten, books are going to be out of five. That's how we're going to work this. Uh, there's also no half stars, so that's going to be interesting. But just know that the ask and the answer is more of a solid five than the knife I never let him go. And if I was feeling like breaking my rules, I'd probably bump it up to a six. If you're not aware, Chaos Walking has a movie releasing very, very soon. March 5th is the date. If you're at all interested by what I'm talking about, please, please watch it if you get the chance. I already know that as soon as that date comes and I can get my hands on that film somehow, it's going to be getting watched and it's going to be getting reviewed. I'm so, so, so excited and I genuinely cannot wait for it. But anyway, I think that's everything from this week's episode of the Media 13 Book Club. Feel free to get into the comments and let me know what you thought of this book, if you've read it or if you're reading through it right now. I know a lot of people probably are because of the fact that the film is so close to release now. But anyway, I hope you'll enjoy hearing my thoughts on The Ask and the Answer, book two of the Chaos Walking trilogy written by Patrick Ness. And I will see you all in the next one. Leave that girl before she wants him. How many are coming? A hundred. Thousands. Come on, I'm talking to a new man. Fight. Be quiet. I'm trying, I'm trying. Come on, fight. 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 fight.